My name is Mark Kelly and I'll be bringing you through the proposal. I work in the Department of Building and Civil Engineering in the GMIT and we'd like to thank the forum today for giving us the opportunity to present our proposal. Uh, the aim of the project is to design, develop and pilot a professional development framework for students, staff, academic staff and industry stakeholders involved in BIM related practice. It was submitted under proposal type two. Um, the main aims of it are to enhance teaching and learning teaching and learning in GMIT and outside of GMIT, professional development of the three uh, sections that I mentioned previously, and also to spe specifically look at a specific uh, discipline, namely building information modeling, but also to init initiate culture change, which is required in the, in the industry and in academia at the moment. It's also building on a Delta Award. We won the inaugural engineering Delta Award in March of this year, and we were delighted to do so. This, so this project proposal is to build on that award. Although it was a GMIT submission, um, I just want to uh, sort of highlight the collaboration uh, amongst the team. So it's a, mainly a collaboration internally between the GMIT Building and Civil Department, but also the Teaching and Learning Unit. <coughs> we have um, support from our head of school and head of department. And we also have a number of industry people involved in it. Mark Costello, who's RPS B, uh, BIM Director. Michelle Fahey, who's BIM Implementation Manager with J.J. Radigans, which is a construction company. Jimmy Fahey, who's here on my left, who's the Regional Coordinator and Regional BIM Manager for BAM Ireland, also a building contractor. And Kenneth Graney, who's a Quantity Surveyor with Kerry Building Development. So we're delighted to have the industry input on the core team. Mark Costello and Gerard Nicholson have just come back from Las Vegas um, where they presented our BIM-related research at the Autodesk University um, series over there. So they were a bit jet lagged, that's why they could, couldn't be up here today. So what is it? What is we talking about? So BIM is a collaborative way of working which uses a digital module, mo model and places at the centre of all the work. And this is a, a, a complete difference to the way the industry traditionally has worked and that the industry has been fragmented through the different stages of the project, from the design, construction, to the operation, to the final handover of the project. Um, it's a process of creating and managing information over the whole project life, life cycle to inform decisions over that life cycle based on the digital description of every aspect of that built asset. <clears throat> but it's not just about the technology or the 3D software that you might see, it's also a process to engage everybody involved in the supply chain at every stage to collaborate. And it's also about the people. So as I mentioned, it's going to need a huge culture change in the industry in Ireland, both in, in all sorts of projects to go towards this collaborative way of working that moves away from the adversarial practice that we've had over the last number of years. So again, the collaboration, collaborative aspect of it, we're already engaged in the network. We're going to expand that network to include students and other industry stakeholders, but we have the national BIM regions. So there's a series of regional BIM hubs that are set up around the country where we have activities between academia and industry. CESIA, which is the Construction IT Alliance, which has been a leader in the BIM space. There's also a National BIM Council, and we also are linking in with DIT and WIT through their BIM research um, collectives. We also have links with Tampere University in... Um, Finland, and we're actually preparing a Delta, the new Erasmus Plus Delta scholarship application at the moment to build on this work and other work that we do with Tampere to go over there in April of next year. We also have members on the BIM Academic Forum in the UK, and we also have been collaborating with the BRE from the UK over the last number of years. We have extensive industry engagement. We have a, a support of all the professional bodies, and a, as I mentioned, we have a number of contractors and different design teams involved um, at this stage. So the idea would be would be to invite representatives from these people to join the steering group if this project was lucky enough to be funded. So th there's three elements to the, to the project, really, is to build a BIM competency assessment tool, which doesn't exist at the moment, either in industry or in academia to link this to a series of BIM reusable learning resources. So we're going to use a, an already developed framework called the My Experience, which was used for the recognition of prior learning. We're going to adapt that to develop the company assessment tool. We're already going to use a, a, a develop CPD Learn Online to host the BIM reusable learning resources, and we're going to align that with a series of digital badges. So one of our, our core team members, Wayne Gibbons, in our department is doing a PhD at the moment in digital badges in education, and we've developed some pilot digital badges with second year students already, and we want to expand that so that it can apply to staff, students, and industry as well. <coughs> it's building on a reciprocal learning framework that ourselves and RPE, RPS developed over the last five years in the development of the Higher Diploma in BIM and Engineering, which has been running very successfully. 
we're going to align with the National Professional Development Framework elements by introducing um, different activities and exercises at each stage. An example of that would be the BIM Bites lunchtime series where we would have staff and students co-create uh, presentations to the rest of staff. If somebody uh, introduced the BIM intervention into their teaching practice, we want student feedback on how, the, how that worked for them. And the idea is to bring the student and staff together and to present that and disseminate that to other staff across all the IOTs and universities, not just in GMIT. This will li link into our, our digital badge framework where we can identify both students and staff as being uh, GMI team BIM leaders. <clears throat> We're going to do an extensive review of international best practice, and we've already sort of started this, to look at the competency framework so that we can base it, the digital badge framework around the basic, intermediate, advanced, and expert uh, levels. So what will it deliver? What we really want to deliver is start catalyzing a culture change from within the institute, but also outside in industry. And this graphic here, our, our cartoon shows what is, can happen in the industry and the difficulties that can arise. So the different interpretations of what a client wants from a project or a building, leading into how the architect might visualize it, how the engineer might design it, and then how health and safety would want it. But the thing we're trying to avoid is the end point, is what the client paid for and what the client actually received. So that is a big issue in the industry, as the two lads here will attest to. Um, how can we get over that? So the trans technology has always been a driver in the industry and it's, and it's beginning to be, there's a tipping point now in the construction sector where really it's beginning to take off. But just to give you a sort of historical context of the driver, in 1967 we had the motor mason was presented as a solution to the housing crisis in Britain, which might sound familiar to anybody familiar with Ireland at the moment, as it laid bricks ten, five to ten times faster than a human. A latest iteration of that is the Hadrian X, which is able to build a complete shell of a house in just two days. Fabricator robots, which can form steel reinforcement frameworks ahead of concrete pores. Drones are being used for site surveying, um, health and safety inspections and progress reporting, but also can be used for construction works. Virtual reality applications can create an immersive environment and headset um, to enable industry stakeholders to step into their buildings of the future. Humanoid robots being developed in Japan are installing uh, plasterboard slabs, and a recent University of Oxford study said that actually that, that profession has an 80% chance of being replaced in the, in the next 10 to 15 years. Augmented reality is a live copied view of the physical real world environment, which allows users user to become interactive and have the ability to manipulate the world. Scan to BIM, which is a process of 3D laser scanning, uh, physical space or size to create an accurate digital representation of it. 3D pin printing can be used from anything from rapid prototyping, component manufacturing, scale modeling to full scale printing of a house and bridge components. Other technologies which are also prevalent are the use of autonomous and self driving vehicles on site, uh, ectoskeleton applications for heavy lifting, u the use of Internet of Things and big data, the use of artificial intelligence for project scheduling and planning and also blockchain applications in for smart contracts and identi identity certification. So whether you think this is a utopian or dystopian view of the future, it is still incumbent on higher education to be able to respond to this and to enable students to be able to thrive and lead in this sector because all of these things look good on a video but they pose huge challenges both from an educational point of view and an industry point of view. We want the project to continue to empower leaders, um, both from a staff point of view, but also a student point of view. So we've been, the industry partners we've been developing have seen progress, they've been awarded certifications. We've embedded a BRE BIM approved graduate program for students and we've been piloting that. But we want GMIT as a client to be a public sector BIM leader itself. And evidence of that is the GMIT Innovation Hub, which is a four million euro project, which is due to commence in a couple of weeks, has a BIM requirement as part of that process. So we're working very closely with the Building and Estates Office um, on that. We want to develop the community of practice, so we already have an existing community of practice, but we want to expand on that um, and look into different aspects. But we want to encourage one thing that's missing from the community of practice at the moment is getting to students as partners, students as researchers, and working into in interdisciplinary spaces. So we still have, there are silos in industry under the different trades, but we also have silos in our department between architectural technology, civil engineering, construction management. And, and we want to bring those together because that reflects what the industry should be. 
<coughs> as I mentioned, we were lucky enough to win the Delta Award back in March of this year. And what we, as part of that Delta submission, we had to submit a three-year plan of work. So this project will help us implement that plan of work to ensure that we can expand the community of practice and develop that BAME and digital literacy will be embedded as threshold com, uh, concepts across the whole pro all our programs, not just in the building of civil engineering, but also in the School of Engineering. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at developing curriculum assessment. We want the, uh, the digital badge framework to be embedded into the student population so that as they go through their four years in the college, they can clock up these digital badges under the, from going from basic to advanced so that the industry can recognize that. We also want to engage with students, as I mentioned, as partners, co-creators, and researchers. Um, we're already starting to do that as part of our GMIT first five, first five weeks induction programs, but also to push students towards more looking at developing e-portfolios and digital CVs so that the industry can see evidence of their work rather than handing in a hard copy CV, because industry, is, as we might allude to later, um, are having difficulties in, in identifying who's competent at doing what. We're also developing our current higher diploma in building information modeling to spring to springboard fund funding in an online environment and we have 50 industry people signed up to start that in march and we have another 50 to 60 on a waiting list so the demand is really high for this area assessment strategies so what we want to look at is sort of demo democratic assessment strategies again engaging with staff and students the, the, the great thing about the digital construction area is that uh, students can become very creative as can staff so so if they want to go off and do something different to what's on the curriculum we give them that space to do that so we've started to introduce things like hackathons um, having research papers going into a final year uh, research journal and also multidisciplinary group work to competitions and so on Everything is based on the, the whole idea of scholarship and evidence base, and also on and to be research informed. Um, so we're using that learning, uh, learn, reciprocal learning framework to do that, and it has served us well up until now when we want to expand it a bit further. But we want digital literacy and fluency as a guiding threshold concept. Our programmatic review is, is, is this year coming up, and this is one of the guiding principles of the threshold con concepts across the whole program. We're also responding to national drivers. There is a national uh, roadmap to digital transition uh, driver there, policy document from government to government are, haven't gone, haven't mandated it yet, but it's coming down the line. But the, in that document, they identify that we should be producing, uh, preparing consistent, seamless and co coherent digital experience for students, and specifically, obviously, targeted at the construction sector. We're also responding to the National Digital Skills Strategy and also the National Teach and Learning Forum because we're looking at digital innovation and digital capability as being a core part of any construction-related program. So what you see is we have a, a number of overlapping work packages that we're going to go through, which have a number of things linked to the different quarters um, and different milestones and different outputs. So we will have continuous engagement with students, staff and industry through questionnaire surveys, focus groups, work groups, Delphi studies and so on. And we'll be maximizing resources that already have been developed, namely the My Experience IAE and the CPD Learn Online, and they are using and have been sustainable, as, as Karina may attest to later on. Um, but the key thing is engagement with everybody um, so that we can capture, we can ensure that the students, that the staff are competent enough to deliver the material, that the students gain those competencies that will benefit industry. So we'll have continuous peer feedback on the tool when we develop the competency assessment tool that we'll have a feedback mechanism there where students, academic staff and industry will come back and say, does it work well, does it not work well? Similarly with the digital badge micro-credentials and all the learning resources we're going to develop as well. <coughs> Our dissemination output, we intend to do, you know, use the formal and informal manners, but we're going to be using our work groups within the institution. We're going to use the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary work groups, but we're also going to have, we have a number of events within the GMIT, like our annual construction management conference that we're going to look at as well, as well as academic papers and so on. We're basing around the activities of the, of the National Forum so people can jump in at whatever their competency level is. So if people is already fairly BIM enabled, they can jump in at the leading element. And we're also going to leave room for critical reflection because we want to have the Institute as a role model pedagogy. There's no point us telling industry that you need to all collaborate if we're not collaborating within our department or across the other higher education institutes. Um, and the aim is to bring the site into the classroom. So one of the things with the Innovation Hub was due to construct, we're bringing that into the classroom, and that's a case study to be embedded into the curriculum. Um, the impact, 
there'll be a number of impacts as I've already mentioned but we're looking at um, developing newer things like the BIM Futures Research Journal where we'd have students as researchers where they'd be allowed to publish a working paper at the end of the year and looking at teaching and learning practice to make sure that it's a, a pedagogical methodology so that everybody along the line can enable them to be leaders. So just when you're looking at a student's life cycle and the transitions that are contained or in for the student, what we want to use the, the two is first of all to attract students in to GMIT and into the construction related programs, but also to empower them during the thing to become from taking being a passive learner to empower them to be leaders in this area. So we have a number of initiatives there that we hope to into, and we're going to link in with digital citizenship and literacy and also the, the guidelines of the National Student Engagement Program. So we've already won a number of awards for the program, including the Delta Award and for recognized by industry. Um, but we want to evolve this further. And what we see this is that this is a subset of a bigger scale, which is a building futures project. And we actually are convening a national meeting workshop next year with the Construction Industry Federation, sort of led by GMIT, where we're bringing all the higher education institutes together and the industry together to talk about what industry needs more broadly. BIM is one part of that, but we're looking at a more broad picture. Just finally, to address the international panel comments from the first review, um, student leadership was key. I hope we address that through looking at the different strategies that we've um, identified and also the collaborative aspects of the panel and so on. <coughs> Lastly, I hope it can be seen that we're meeting the strategic priorities of the National Forum itself with professional development of those who teach, teach and learn and hands up and looking at it in the digital world and enabling student success. I'm under pressure, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.